right, so yeah, Wiltrox sent me a new monitor. Like I showed in the other video, I had a few issues with HDMI and the fan speed and stuff like that. And then mine stopped working. So something with the backlight unit or something. So they sent me a new one. This is a brand new one with the new firmware, with the latest firmware. And keep in mind, yes, Viltrox did send me this unit and the other one as well. I can keep this, but Viltrox does not have any influence in this video and they don't see it before it's uploaded. Okay, let's see if they fixed all the issues I had. With the original monitor I got, there was an issue with HDMI. As soon as I had it on 4K 50 or 100 frames per second, I had to set the output of the HDMI of the camera to 1080p. Now it seems to be fixed. I am on 50p here and as you can see the input source now says it's 4k and it's 25. So the monitor actually requests a 25p signal from the camera so in this case, it works totally fine. It worked for all my other monitors like the PT5, the Atomos Ninja or Shinobi or even with the OC. Um, it gets a 4K signal. This is especially interesting or essential if you have a loop through or if you want to zoom in like here and want to see the full 4K resolution, have a bit more resolution to see if your focus is right. Peaking works better. Also, if you have high ISO, the image seems to be cleaner on the monitor and that is really essential. And so they fixed this and this is fine. So it is essential that you have the output resolution and the HDMI settings set to auto, because if you set it to 4K or 2160, uh, the monitor will get confused, I think, or the camera doesn't know what to send to the monitor. So this monitor only works up to 30p with a 4K input signal. So essential to set this to auto but that is the case with all the other monitors i have as well anyways a different thing was the fan speed now i have set it to low it is almost not noticeable only if you are really close but yeah you can set it to high yeah even in this situation i have background noises going on outside you can't really hear it so I set it to off, even though I really wouldn't recommend setting it to off only if you have a quiet room and have an interview going because uh, the backlight unit gets quite hot. But let's see if I turn it off with the old monitor, with the original firmware, it always reset to mid which was not a big issue, but it gets annoying if you want to set it to low or something. So let's see if the monitor now remembers the setting. Um, boot up time seems to be fine as well, a bit quicker. So let's go into the menu, fan speeds, and it remembered off. So I usually have it on low and only for interviews I would set it to off. Um, so all the other stuff worked fine before. It seems they cleaned up the menu a bit. I will have a full hands-on video because I think this monitor for the money has quite a few nice options. And yeah, um, I will use it now for a few projects and see how it works if it's any good for real work so yeah so far so good now with the new firmware update there's a link for the download and instructions or if you buy one now you will get a monitor with the latest firmware uh, all the little issues especially with hdmi input and the fan speed is fixed so that is fine and yeah let's see how it works in the real life Next up will a video about the XS20 and the Tamron 17 to 70. How my experience shooting video with it for two weeks on real projects and what my opinions are. Anyways, that's it. All about this little monitor here. Um, thanks for watching. See you in the next one and back to work.